how are you everybody welcome to english classroom how are you all hope you all are doing well in this video we are going to learn an essay written by max birbhum and the essay is going out for a walk in this essay the author challenges the very idea that walking is a good exercise he opposes the idea and he says while we walk for the sake of walking our brain stops working right and even in people having high intellectual power start talking foolishness absurd things okay anyway let's see let's move to the chapter before that let's know something about the author max birbaum 1872 to 1956 sir henry maximilian max birbaum the english writer and caricaturist is remembered for the elegance and general humor of his personal essays so he is known for his personal essays the beauty and the way he presents things the sense of humor right that's why he is remembered he is known he is best known today for his 19 lover novel zuleika dobson he is mainly known for his novel zuleika dobson in the essay going out for a walk 1918 birbaum challenges the notion that walking is a productive mental exercise he challenges he questions the idea that walking is a mental exercise especially if one is accompanied by a talkative companion and he says especially one is accompanied by a when one is accompanied by a talkative person then walking is an absurd thing to do okay let's move on walking like any other exercise undoubtedly leads to physical wellness walking just like any other exercise it leads to physical fitness right physical wellness there may be difference of opinion the argument that each and every moment has to be filled with activity has gained currency these days so the idea the argument that each and every moment in our life should be filled with something worthwhile has gained currency has gained acceptance among the people in these days in the in the essay going out for a walk max birbaum looks at walking from a different perspective so in this essay the author looks at the practice of walking from a different perspective he um, expresses his opinion and it is different from what we think of it right let's see going out for a walk it's a fact that not once in all my life have i gone out for a walk the author has never gone out for a walk in all his life i have never been i have been taken out, out for walks but that's an another matter right i have never gone by my own but i have been taken by someone else someone else will ask me to accompany them then i'll be forced to join them then i'll go but i have never gone on a walking by myself right even while i trotted prattling by my nurse side i regretted the good old days when i had and wasn't a perambulator even when um, i trotted prattling trotted means to move faster than walking just like children do right when we, when i was a child and when i was walking along by uh, by the side of my nurse when while i trotted walk, walked and moved faster than walking that's mean that's what you mean by trot trot means uh, move at a pace less than running less than running faster than walking okay then even while i trotted prattling prattling means talking this and that uh, unnecessary things so usually children do like that right they uh, they move faster they talk unnecessary thing they question all the thing they come across right so when i was a child even when i was a child i regretted the good old days i regret the good old days while i had and wasn't a perambulator when i had a perambulator perambulator means child carriage you must have seen people uh, pulling child carriage right keeping their child in so i had a child carriage and my parents used to take me somewhere they wish in the perambulator uh, so when i had a perambulator i regret those days when i had a perambulator means i was taken out for walking and and was in a perambulator so when you connect it with wasn't then the meaning of perambulator is someone who walks especially for the purpose of leisure right so he says i regret those old days 
when I was taken by my parents outside for walking, actually I wasn't that person, I wasn't that person who liked walking, I wasn't a perambulator and I had a perambulator, I had that carriage but I wasn't a perambulator, so in this case perambulator has got two meaning, right, when you use, when you say when I had a perambulator it is that carriage and when you say I wasn't a perambulator means I wasn't that person who liked walking, okay, so he says I even when I was a child I didn't like walking especially for the sake of walking right so the the other is against walking only you are walking for just for walking not for other purpose people may walk for so many other purposes right you will have to meet someone you will have to buy something from nearby shops so walking for that purpose that's okay for the other he doesn't oppose this idea but walking for the sake of walking is not good he doesn't think he doesn't think it's a good exercise okay when I grew up, it seemed to me that the one advantage of living in London was that nobody ever wanted me to come out for a walk. So now, as he's living in London, now it's quite easy for him because nobody asks him to join them in their walking. Nobody forces him, right? Uh, so it's one of the, um, what? So living in London, it is the one of the advantages of living in London that nobody wants you to, uh, nobody forces you to join them in their walking, right? London's London is very drawbacks. London has so many drawbacks, right? London has so many drawbacks. It's endless noise and hustle, busy life, right? Endless noise, busy, always busy life. It's smoky air. The scale are ambushed everywhere. Scale means dirt, ambushed. Dirt is present everywhere, ambushed everywhere. In it and all, it has all these um, drawbacks still it assured this one immunity but it gave you this immunity that nobody will force you to join them whenever I was with friends in the country I knew that at any moment unless rain were actually falling some man might suddenly say come out for a walk but when I was living in country not in London I when I was living in country sites people in the country they would come to you and ask you to come for a walk let's go out for a walk right some man might suddenly say come out for a walk in the if it is not raining they will come and ask you to come out for a walk in that sharp imperative tone which he would not dream of using it and it was in that imperative tone that that just like that of a commanding tone they would ask you come come and join me in walking come let's go out for a walk like that's just like that of a command the tone of the command they use it right so that happened in when i was there in country countries when i was living in the country in the village areas right people seem to think there is something inherently noble and virtuous in the desire to go for a walk people think that there is something noble it's a um, good character to go out for a walk right something virtuous you are doing something virtuous while you go for of walking they think that there is inherently noble and virtuous in the desire to go out for a walk right they think there is something sacred something respectable there in walking and anyone that's desirous feels that he has a right to impose his will on whomever he sees comfortably settled in an armchair reading and those person who think that it's a noble activity to go out for a walk and they think that actually they possess the right to impose their idea of going out for a walk to, on any other person whom they come across. And if they see someone sitting on a chair and reading something, they would go and ask them to join. Come, let's go for a walk. They think that it's their right. And our order is totally against this practice. It is easy to say simply no to an old friend. If the person is one of your friends, you can simply say, no, I'm not coming with you. But in the case of a mere acquaintance, one wants some excuse, but those people are not your, from your friends, they are just acquaintance, means familiar people, not friends, right? So in the case of a mere acquaintance, one wants some excuse, so then you will have to find some excuse. If it is one of your friends, you, you could easily say, no, I'm not coming, I'm not coming for walking now, you can say, but you don't have that connection and you just know each other, 
then you will have to find some reason, some justification, sir, some excuse. Then I won't want some excuse. I wish I could. You will have to say, I wish I could come with you, but I wish I could, but and nothing ever occurs to me except I have some letters to write. But whenever someone comes and asks the author to join them in their working, the only thing that comes to his mind was, I wish I could come with you, but I have some letters to write. I have some letters to write. That's the only thing that comes to his mind as a justification, as an excuse, right? This formula is unsatisfactory in three ways, but this formula, this reason is not satisfactory at all. In three, three ways, it is not satisfactory, right? If you say this exists, still, they won't feel satisfied for three reasons. Okay, let's see what are they. The first reason why it is not a satisfactory one, it isn't believed. If you say, I have some letters to write every day, it's not believed by people, right? And second one, it compels you to rise from your chair, go to the writing table and sit improvising a letter to somebody until the workmonger shall have lumbered out of the room. And the second reason is that if you say that I have some letters to write, after saying this, you can't be there in the chair itself. You will have to leave your chair and go to the writing table and act just like writing something, right? Framing some letters, right? So you will have to uh, go to the writing table and sit improvising a letter to somebody until the workmonger, the one who asked you to come with, right? The one who forces you um, to join their work, his working uh, shall have lumbered out of the room, shall have upwardly work. Lumbered means walk awkwardly, right? Shall have gone out of the room. He came to ask you to come with him, right? But uh, if you say, I have some letters to write, you will have to go to the writing table and just begin the letter. Just You will have to act just like writing letter until that person leave, lost your place, right? Just not daring to call you liar and hypocrite. And that person, the workmonger, he, he doesn't dare to call you a liar. Actually, he knows that you are lying, but he is not dared. He is not bold enough to call you a liar or a hypocrite. Okay. Third one, it won't operate on Sunday morning. And this reason won't operate on Sunday morning. You can't say this on Sundays because on Sundays there is no post, right? So it won't operate on Sunday mornings. There is no post out till this evening clinches the matter. Because on Sundays, if you say the, the same reason, they would say, uh, today there is no post till this evening. Only after the evening the post will be working, right? Clinches the matter. Then uh, you will have to go out for a bit. And you may as well go quietly. Then you also will have to go quietly with them. Right, that's the thing happens. Okay, working for working sake may be as highly laudable and exemplary a thing as it is held to be by those who practice it. Working for working sake, that's what the point the author against working for working sake is not against working for some purpose. Right, working for working sake may be as highly laudable. Price of uh, price worthy, laudable means something can be priced, price worthy, laudable and exemplary a thing. Exemplary means imitatable thing, a very good example. Imitatable, right? Laudable and exemplary a thing, as it is held to be by those who practice it. Then those people who practice working, they think that it is a very price worthy thing, and it's a, a thing that can be imitated, that can be followed by others, right? My objection to it is that it stops the brain. But the author thinks that this practice stops the brain. Your brain doesn't work while walking, right? Many a man has professed to me that his brain never works so well as when he's swinging along the high road or over, over hill and dale, right? Many a man has professed or has argued, claimed to me that his brain never works so well as when he's swinging along the high road. So many people claim to me that their brain works better when they are walking. Swing means brain no works so well as when he's swinging along the high road, when they are walking along the uh, high road or move hill, over a hill and a dale. And dale means valley. So, so many people claim that their brain works better when they walk by the road or hill or the valley. Right. And their brain works better than any other type. This boast is not confirmed by my memory of anybody who on a Sunday morning has forced me to partake of his adventure. But this boast 
has never been confirmed by myself. I have gone for walking. Actually, I have never gone, but I have been taken for walking by so many people on Sunday mornings because on Sundays this just this exodus won't operate, won't work, right? So on Sunday morning, I have been with so many people, and this idea, this notion that one's brain works better when one is walking is has not been confirmed. I have never seen this. Right, on Sunday morning has forced me to partake on this adventure. So I haven't confirmed this from my experience. Experience teaches me that whatever a fellow guest may have of the power to instruct or amuse when he is sitting on a chair or standing on a hearth rug quickly leaves him when he takes one out for a walk. Here he means blessed by the person who takes one out for a walk. Right. Then the experience he what experience taught him was Whatever a fellow guest may have of the power to instruct or amuse when he is sitting on a chair, then those person who has good power of thinking or instructing people or amusing people when they are sitting on a chair or standing on a hearth rug. Hearth rug means the carpet nearby the fireplace, right? So that means the people who have high intellectual power when they are inside house, sitting on a chair or being on a hearth rug means you are inside the house, right? So those people who have high intellectual power to uh, instruct others, to amuse others, when they are inside the house, it leaves him when he takes one out for a walk. And this intellectual power will quickly leave him once he set out for the purpose of walking. So whatever intellectual power you have while you are being inside the house will leave you once you step out to walk for the sake of walking. That's what his experience taught him. The idea that came so thick and fast to him in any room, where are they now? So when they are in a room, in any room, the idea will come to their mind. The ideas that came so thick and fast to their mind, to him, in any room, where are they now? Where are the ideas now? When you step outside for walking, all the ideas will leave you. Where is the encyclopedic knowledge which he bore so lightly? He has encyclopedic knowledge a lot of things he knows he knows everything something about everything while inside the house but what happens once he leaves the house he forgets everything where the kindling fancy that played like summer lightning over any topic that was started kindling fancy imagination the powerful imagination he had or any topic that come across right any topic started he will have something to share about it where all this fancy has gone. All these fancies have gone. Where the kindling fancy that played like summer lightning that was that fast to come to him over any topic that was started, where, where have they gone? Once a person stepped out for the sake of walking, he forgets all these things. His brain leaves him. The man's face that was so mobile is set now. The man's face, which was so active, and move, uh, mobile means moving, right? So active was, once it was so active, is set now. Now it's just dull. Gone is the light from his fine eyes and from his good eyes. The light is gone. He says that A, our host, he says that A, A means the one who joins him in his walking, host, our host. The one who takes you out for a walking is guest. The one who joins him is a host by the author, his, his own way, okay. A, our host, is a thoroughly good fellow. So while walking, he would say, A is a thoroughly good fellow. Fifty yards further, he adds that A is one of the best fellows he has ever met. At first, he says, A is a thoroughly good fellow. After moving a few more steps, he says, uh, A is the best fellow he has ever met. We tramp another furlong or so. We tramp, we move, we walk another furlong. Furlong is a measure for distance, right? One eighth of a kilometer. So uh, after moving one eighth of a mile, right? So after moving a bit more, they, he says, and he says that Mrs. A is a charming woman. Mrs. A is a charming woman. So he says, he talks unnecessary things which has no relevance in the context, right? Because he doesn't have to talk about A. And if, if still he is talking about A, he doesn't have to talk about A's wife, right? Mrs. A is a charming woman. Presently, he adds that she is one of the most charming women, most charming women he has ever known. And after that, he adds that 
Mrs. A is one of the most charming women. So the pattern, the sentence pattern of the sentence, you can see moves alike. And he simply says whatever not necessary to be discussed. We pass an in, we move an in. He reads rapidly aloud to me. Then as he, as he passes, he reads, the king's arms license to sell ales and spirit. King's arms. So it's a shop and it is written there, king's arms license to sell ales and spirit. And it is licensed to sell ales and spirit, some kind of beer. Right. Okay. So he talks unnecessary things and he reads something that is not relevant by this. The author says, someone who is high in the, having high intellectual power will talk nonsense things while he, once he starts going out for a walk. Okay. I foresee that during the rest of the walk, he will read aloud any inscription that occurs. And the author foresees that during the rest of his walking, he would read whatever come across. Right. Whatever inscription he sees, he would read. We pass a milestone. He points at it with his stick and says, Ask Minister, 11 miles. So as we pass a milestone, he would point to the milestone using his stick and he would read, Ask Minister, 11 miles. Right. We turn a sharp corner at the foot of a hill. Then we turn a corner. He points at the wall and says, Drive slowly. So in corners, in course, usually they stick the, this signboard, right? Drive slowly. So everybody can see that, but still he will point to that and he would read, drive slowly. I see far ahead, on the other side of the hedge, bordering the high road, a small notice board, he sees it too. There is another notice board far ahead and he sees that too. He keeps his eyes on it and in due course, trespassers, he says, will be prosecuted. So whatever he sees there on the road, he would take time and read it. That's why the author says, while you start working, your brain stops work, working, right? Mentally a wreck. The author says, he is mentally a wreck. There is something problem with him. Right. Lunchen at the ace, A's, however, salves him and floats him in full sail. Lunchen, lunchen means lunch. Formal language for lunch. Lunchen at A's, however, salves him. Salves means uh, come for him. Right, suits him, you com uh, consoles him and floats him in full sail. That's make him move faster. Full sail is something uh, term used with ships, right? Sail, sailing ship, sails. So full sails mean go very fast. That's what make him move faster. Behold him once more, the life and soul of the party. So when he's inside the room, when he's taking part in a party, you can see him is the life and soul of the party. That means while he's inside the house, he's a great person. But what happens when he comes outside the house for the purpose of walking, he's mentally a wreck. Right. Behold him, see him, look at him, once more the life and soul of the party. And surely he will never, after the bitter lesson of this morning, go out for another walk. And the other thinks that after today's, this morning's incident, he will never go out for a walk again. Because while he's walking, his brain stops working and he talks unnecessary things. Right. So the other thing that he would never go out for a walk again. And or later, I see him striding forth with a new companion. But what happens? After an hour, I see the same person striding, means walking with another person. He's going out with another person. Yes. I watch him out of sight and I know what he is saying. He's saying that I'm rather a dull man to go for a walk with. So now I see that he is walking with another person and after leaving his distance, now I know what is he saying to his fellow men. What is, what is he telling him? That I am a dull person. And he'll presently add that I am one of the dullest men he ever went for a walk with. And after mo moving a bit more steps, he would say, I am the dullest person he has ever walked with. Right. Then he will devote himself to reading out the inscriptions. And after that, he would read whatever he sees on the road, right, by the roadside inscriptions, signboards, notice boards, everything he would read. How comes it? This immediate deterior, deterioration in those who go for walking for walking sake, the other wonders, how comes this? How happens this? The person who is having high intellectual power while he was inside the house loses that power and he uh, 
talks, things which is not relevant. What happens? Just what happens? I take it that not by his reasoning faculties is a, a man urged to, to do this enterprise. I understand that. It is not because of his reasoning power that he ought to work. He ought to go outside for, the, for working for the sake of working. It's not his reason that what makes him to do that. Then what else? He is urged evidently by something in him that transcends reason. It must be something else which, which can surpass reason, which can survive reason, right? Something uh, works better than reasons. What is it? By his soul. It must be his soul. I presume, I think, I guess it must be the soul that makes him go out for a walk. Yes, it must be the soul that wraps out kick mouth. Yes. It must be the soul that command, wraps out means give, kick command, wraps out, kick march. It must be the soul that gives the body the command to go out for a walking. Halt, standard is, interposes the brain. So when the soul gives the command of kick march, the brain interposes, interferes and say halt, stop. Halt, standard is, the brain would give the command of standard is and the brain would ask, to what destination it slowly asks the soul and on what errand are you sending the body and the brain would ask the soul to what destination are you taking the body and on what errand on what mission are you taking the body the brain would ask the soul that what would be the answer of the soul or no or no errand whatsoever the soul makes answer there is no mission at all and no destination at all. There is no destination, no mission. I just take the body just for the sake of walking. There is no reason for walking. Right. It is just like you to be always on the lookout for some subtle ulterior motive. Only people like you, the soul says the brain, only people like you would look for some reasons to do things. And people like me would never need for a, need for a reason to do things. We do things without having any reason is the answer from the soul. The body is going out because the mere fact of its doing so is a sure indication of nobility, probity and rugged grandeur of character. And the body is doing so, the body is going out for a walk just because doing so is an indication of nobility. People would think that he's such a noble person, great person. Nobility, probity, same meaning, right? Probity is doing good things. And rugged grandeur of character. And it's rough, roughly a great character. If some person is going out for a walking, he is considered to be having a great personality. He's a good person. Okay, great, uh, great means rough, R O U G H, rough. Uh, rugged grandeur, grandeur means the, the size, grandeur of character means good character he's having. So people would think that someone who is going out for a walk is a noble person, is a good person, virtuous one and an Im imitatable one, right? Very well, regular, have your own valula. So the brain says to the soul, very well, regular. The brain addresses the soul by calling regular. Regular means wanderer, wanderer, one who goes out for walking. So very well, regular, very well, the wanderer. Have your own valula, have your own way. You have your own way, you move on in your own way, but I am not part of it. Very well, regular, very well, wanderer have your own way. So he coined these words, right? It is his own words. He just, it is just way. He added regular just to rhyme with regular. Okay. But I says, but I says the brain, the brain says, flatly refuse to be mixed up in this tomfoolery. You have your own way, brain. You have your own way, soul. You move on, but I don't have any part to take in this tomfoolery, in this foolish act. I don't have any role to play, the brain would say. I shall go to sleep till it's over, the brain would say. I shall go to sleep till this working is over. I won't work. Brain won't work once until the working is over. The brain then wraps itself up in its own convolutions and falls into a dreamless slumber from which nothing can rouse it till the body has been safely deposited indoors again. After saying this, the brain goes to sleep in its own convolutions, means in its own frame, in its own shape. The brain goes to its own shape, it shrinks to its shape 
and goes to sleep and falls into a dreamless slumber from which nothing can rouse it till the body has been safely deposited indoors again and the bo the brain will be waking up the brain can be aroused only once he got inside the house right it has been safely deposited indoors again when he came back to inside to his room then only the brain will be working again okay even if you go to some definite place for some definite purpose the brain would rather you took a vehicle even if you are going to some particular place you have a destination you have things to do still the brain would prefer the brain would rather you took a vehicle brain wants you to take vehicle rather than walking that's what the brain's attitude but it does not make a point of this but it doesn't uh, forces you to do this you are not going out just for the sake of working you are going out you are working for some purpose still the brain would rather you took some vehicle but it doesn't forces you to do so it will serve you well enough unless you are going out for a walk brain will serve you if you are not going if you are not working for the sake of working means if you are working for some other purpose the brain will serve you right it won't while your legs are vying with each other do any deep thinking for you nor even any close thinking the brain won't work when your legs are vying each other competing each other while you walk your uh, feet are why legs are um, competing each other right one comes first then the other exits like that right so for just for when you work for just the sake of working the brain won't do any thinking for you um, do a, won't do any deep thinking for you nor even any close thinking no neither deep thinking nor close thinking not sm a small thinking also it won't do but it will do any number of small or jobs for you willingly provided that your legs also are making themselves useful but it would do all the thinking for you if your legs are doing some useful things means provided that your legs also are making themselves useful mean they are using themselves to for some purposes for some useful things to buy something to meet some person to visit some places are you going then your brain will assist you it will think for you right not merely bandying you about to gratify the pride of the soul so when 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 you go out for a walk just to gratify the pride of the soul soul needs you to walk right so you are going out to gratify the pride of soul then i won't help you but if you have some destination some particular goal then surely the brain will help you right banding means exchanging right not merely banding you about to gratify banding means you exchange the legs one after the other just to gratify the pride just to make just to uh, make your soul happy you are walking then i won't help you i won't do anything for you but at the same time if you have some um, destination or some goal some aims to attain then i'll surely help you such as it is this is this essay was composed in the course of a walk and this essay also was composed uh, while i was walking but that walking was not just for the sake of walking the author went for a walking in the morning because he had something to do right he had something to get done so he went outside walking then this essay came to his mind and at the same time if he was going out for a walk just for the sake of walking this won't occur in his mind this morning i'm i'm not one of those extremists who must have a vehicle to every destination i am not that person who forces everyone who compels everyone to have one vehicle i never i never go out of my way as it is this world to avoid exercise i don't i won't avoid working just to avoid exercise i am not against working to avoid exercise i am not against working at all right i take it as it comes and take it in good part i take walking when it comes when it is needed i would take walking and i i would take in it good parts I mean right i don't go out for working just for the sake of working that means i am not against working i work when it is necessary i take things in its good part those valetudinarians who are always chattering about it and indulging in it to excess or no reason for despising it right 
So those valetudinarians means those sickly people, person with sick, sickly constitutions, those sick persons who are always chattering about it, who are, who are always talking about working and indulging in it, and they indulge in it, they do working, are always uh, to exist, are no reason for despising it. So, so many people, so many sickly people, they talk about it and they indulge in walking and it is not the mere reason to avoid walking. If don't avoid walking because people talk too much about it, you walk whenever it is necessary and don't walk if it is not necessary. Right. So it's not a reason to despise it, to avoid walking. I am inclined to think that in moderation it is rather good for one physically. In moderation, I am not extremist. In moderation, when I think in medium level, I understand that it's a good thing. It's a physically good thing, right? Rather good for one physically. Walking is good for one physically. But pending a, a time when no people wish me to go and see them, and I have no wish to go and see anyone, and there is nothing whatever for me to do off my own premises, I never will go out for a walk. But at the same time, the, no person wants to meet me, no person wants to uh, see me, and I don't want to meet any person or I don't want to go anywhere, then I will never, I will never go out for a walk. And if I don't have anything to do other than my premises in some distant area, I won't go for a walk. If I have to meet some person, if some person needs to me, or if I have some works to get done uh, uh, out of my premises, then I will go for a walk. Otherwise, I will never go out for a walking. That's what the author's view about walking, right? So he simply against the practice of walking for the sake of walking. He thinks you can walk only if it is necessary, right? Okay, hope you understood the essay. It's uh, humorously he uh, looks at the practice of walking. Uh, he's such a prolific writer and he's known for his personal essays we talked about in the beginning. And he, his writing is mixed up of many humorous um, expressions, right? So read it carefully and understand, uh, complete the works behind the lesson. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.